I'm coming to you guys today with the Westmere Dominator. This is the 32 nanometer $20 CPU that has four cores, eight threads, and it's an absolute beast. There is one problem though, you have to get the X58 motherboard, which is usually a little bit expensive, but I managed to pick up one for pretty cheap. So without further ado, I'll go through all the parts that I'm gonna be using on this build today. So starting from top to bottom, we have the case and power supply. This is an Enamax case, and I managed to pick up this with a power supply for $20. Never heard of that brand of Sue before, but it does provide 480 watts on the 12 volt line. Below that, we have two 250 gigabyte hard drives, which we picked up shipped for $50. To the left of that, we have 12 gigabytes of DDR3 memory, which we picked up for $53 shipped. And then to the left of that is the most special part of this build. This is the E5640, which we picked up for $19. This is a four core, eight threaded CPU, 32 nanometer CPU. This is what's gonna make this build such a powerhouse today. And then over to the right of the scene there, we have the R9-270X, which was had for around about $95. So very cheap there and a very capable card. Below that, we have an X58 motherboard, ASRock Extreme 3, which actually came with a i7-920, which I'm yet to try out. That came in at $111 shipped. And then besides that, the last part of the build is the Thermal Right Cooler, which I managed to pick up with a fan for $10 shipped. So that brings the total of this build to $320 and we can still sell the i7-920 and recoup some of the costs back. Without further ado though, let's clean up these parts and see how this bad boy runs, or even if it does run.
Okay, so before we put this in the rig, we're just gonna test it out and make sure that it fires up and it's all okay. And then we shall, after that, start doing the build. So let's give it a try. Now this actually has a power button on board, so I don't have to short any pins with a USB stick like I usually do. But let's see if we get a signal. So I've actually got a BIOS code readout there. And yeah, this board looks like it's working absolutely fine. You can see there we've got a boot there. Just gotta check the BIOS, P2.8 as well. So it's got the latest BIOS on it, so we won't actually have to flash the BIOS as well. So it's all ready to go. This i7-920 is good to change. And let's see if the Xeon works on this. Uh, so anyway, this time we'll actually put a cooler on the heatsink. <laughs> I do not recommend you do that like seriously at all because you will overheat your CPU in no time. I was just lucky that I turned it off uh, pretty much straight away. So hopefully this boots up. This is the E5640. So a new type of CPU and hopefully it works. Okay, this is working, cool. So our Xeon E5640 is being recognized there in the BIOS and I'll just turn that light away and we're good to go so it's being recognized and we can start doing the build now memory is being recognized too which is awesome
So there we have it, the $320 Westmere PC is just absolutely killing it at 1080p. CSGO over 200 frames per second, GTA 5 and Just Cause 3, which are like two of the latest titles, are just being handled absolutely fine at 1080p on a blend of medium and high settings there. And man, I am just absolutely impressed with what this build has to offer. And keep in mind, I still have to sell the i7-920. So that'll probably bring this whole build under $300. And at that price, I would have to say that this is by far my favorite build to date, with the performance being really snappy, and some of the things I've done there, like overclocking and RAID zeroing the two hard drives, make it even that much faster to date. Now another thing that makes this whole build so good is the $15 E5640. As you guys could see there, it is an absolute beast of a CPU, scoring around 10K in the physics score in 3D Firestrike. Also another thing is that there is no i7 variant of this CPU, which makes it relatively unknown on the overclocking scene or even in the enthusiast tech scene. Though you will have to get an X58 motherboard which costs around about $100. I was lucky enough to pick up an ASRock Extreme 3 with the i7-920 for around about that price shipped and everything worked perfectly fine. Also another thing with the power supply, since it didn't have the proper proprietary cables, I had to splice off four wires off my ATX24 pin. And even though I don't recommend this, it still got the job done and I was able to save money and not have to go out and buy another power supply. Because this power supply is quiet, it does push a lot of air, and it does give out a decent amount of power, especially on that 12 volt line. Though that's about it for me today guys, if you enjoyed these used PC builds then you know what to do, hit that like button, share this video and whatnot. and if you enjoy these kinds of videos then be sure to subscribe as I'll be definitely coming back to you guys with more in the future and I'll catch you in the next one, peace out for now, bye. I've got my West Miss swag on, yeah. <laughs>